Okay, so I guess I'll explain. Cryptid Court, every episode we put a poll up on YouTube and we have three randomly generated cryptids and you can vote which one you would like us to debate. And whoever wins, whatever cryptid wins the poll, we will debate. One person will take the position that the creature is real and does exist and the other person will just take the position that it doesn't exist. And um, our positions don't necessarily ref reflect our real views, but I think the debate format just makes it a little more interesting rather than us just agreeing with each other, right? Okay, and the winner of uh, this episode's poll is the Orang Mawas, which I guess the fastest way to describe it would be like, think of Bigfoot, but in Malaysia. Mm. Mm -hmm. I okay. mean, if you think, if you say so. Yeah. I mean, you could say Bigfoot is the Orang Mawas in the Pacific Northwest, but I'm just trying to think of a quick way to describe this creature. So for this episode... I'm going to try and take the position that the creature is real, and Mika will take the position that it probably isn't real, right? So uh, uh, I sure. guess, can I go first? Well, I'll say I'm taking the anti-cryptid position, okay. and you're taking the pro-cryptid position. Okay. All right. Okay, so I've got three reasons why I think that this is a real creature. Okay, first, I think you have to look at, is it possible that this creature could exist? And I would say, yes, it is possible. All you have to do is look back at the millions of years of um, hominid evolution to see that um, we have many, many examples of bipeds, many different ones. And the thing is, fossils are pretty rare. So for every fossil we do have, there are probably many others that we don't have. And even for the ones we do have, there are probably offshoots and subspecies. So I don't think in this lineage, being a biped is particularly special necessarily. And then the other thing is uh, large apes. Of course, a lot of people try and say that well, it's Gigantopithecus blackie. Um, I don't necessarily think that has to be the case. I don't really see why Gigantopithecus was a biped. In fact, I think it probably was a quadruped. But perhaps one of its descendants or another offshoot in Wangane or another hominid also developed into a large bipedal ape. Um, I keep saying large. The description uh, says that Orang Mawas is about 3 meters tall or about 10 feet. Um, I will concede that humans are not very good at estimating size, and they very often overestimate. But to overestimate something at about 10 feet tall, I think it would be safe to assume, at the very least, it's significantly bigger than a human. I saw six and feet. By significant, I mean... You saw six feet? Yeah, that's what the description I read said, six feet, so... I saw it between six to 10 feet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, maybe. Well, anyway, my point is that it's probably bigger than a human, but I don't know if it's actually 10 feet tall. Anyway, yeah, so I think there are many examples of bipedal apes in our history and of course we're bipedal apes today and apes can definitely get large like in the past gigantopithecus or even today we have gorilla which are quite big too so i think it, having one of these creatures i mean first of all a, a cre a large bipedal ape existed in our history i think is very likely and i think it, it's somewhat likely that even in modern times they live with us uh, the second thing would be uh, location and habitat so is there is this a suitable location for this animal to live i would say yes it is my reasoning for this is that if you look at the jungles of Johor, malaysia and southern malaysia or even to zone in a bit more if we look at let's say a national park like Endau Rumpin is a large national park, one of the oldest tropical rainforests in the world. It has a lot of biodiversity and it supports a lot of large mammals, including tigers, leopards, elephants, tapirs, deer, and many other things. Uh, the park is, let me get it, 870 kilometers squared or 304 square miles, which is pretty big, but is that big enough to support a small population of large apes? I would say it definitely is. And my reasoning for that is if we look at gorillas, okay, if we, let's say you wanted to go on a tour and see some gorillas, uh, one of the most famous places to do that is a national park in Uganda called the Mahinga National Park, which is home to 100 mountain gorillas, yet it is only 33 square kilometers. So 33 square kilometers is enough to support 100 mountain gorillas, okay, and compare that to 870 square kilometers. And the other thing I wanted to bring up really quickly about that is that I was looking on the website about, you know, you can do the tours to see the gorillas. You can go on treks in this 33 kilometer squared national park with 100 gorillas. And you could get lucky and your guide could 
show you some gorillas within 30 minutes, but sometimes it takes up to seven hours, seven hours to find a gorilla out of 100 in this small national park. And the other thing about the national park in Malaysia, the Endo Rampan National Park, is that during mon monsoon season, it's closed. So no, no people can go there. So for five to six months of the year, so half the year, this very large national park has no outside disturbance. There's no one in there. So I think it would be a very uh, appropriate habitat for this ape. And then the third point is, I think it's possible that this creature could exist. I think it's good habitat, but why? It's because it's possible. What makes us think that it actually is there? Well, I'd say there are many sightings. But people might say, well, anecdotal evidence isn't evidence. All right, fair enough. But we also have many footprints from the area and they're quite large. And while there are some famous photos allegedly printed in a local newspaper that are hard to find online, but I did find a 2006 BBC news report where they went there to investigate and they found large footprints uh, running parallel to a river. So something's leaving those footprints. Really quickly, the final point is that people are seeing something, there's something leaving footprints. I've seen some people say, oh, well, it's sun bears, but there's a few problems with that. Sun bears are the smallest bear species that even the big one, so a big male stands between four to five feet if it's standing on its hind legs, which is half the size of the upper limit. The second thing is none of the physical characteristics described sound like a sun bear. It has a, a flat upturned nose, like a gorilla, according to accounts. It has a bony um, brow above its eyes, like a gorilla. It also emits a weird scent or a bad scent when it's startled, also like a gorilla. Um, and it also has very big lips. So not really like a sun bear. And its behavior is not like a sun bear either. A sun bear is mostly diurnal and spends most of its time up in trees. The orang malas is mostly seen at night and uh, is seen walking or standing, I guess. Um, I have a little more to say, but I talked for a long time. Do you want to try and debunk me? Um, <laughs> yeah, you actually seem to have come with a very good argument prepared today. Uh, so good job. Right. So I just want to say that if you look up malas on Wiktionary, uh, it seems to mean either attentive or orangutan. In fact, some dialects do use malas just to mean orangutan. So this could just be another term for orangutan. Um, to get into what all these words mean, or orang means human, utan means forest, uh, and malas could mean attentive. So it could just be another word for, like the attentive human uh, humanoid um, versus the forest humanoid. There's also another term um, for this cryptid, which also starts with orang, orang dalam. That means deep human. So I guess like deep in the forest. Uh, so what I'm going to say is that it's just an orangutan. It's just a big one. And in some cases, if it's not, um, it could be a sun bear because I saw... I saw that it's supposed to have black fur, and sun bears have black fur. You said they don't have any of the same characteristics, but they do. Um, so okay, well, I think it's thing. just a case of <laughs> you're just in the forest. It's like really thick jungle, um, the jungle of Johor, and you see something that seems like it's standing on two legs, and you think, oh, what is that? And you estimate a size that is way bigger because you're not even close to it, um, and you're scared. And it's just an orangutan or a sun bear, so. Okay, well, there's a problem with what you just said. I'd like to point out to you. What? What? You said, all right, it's either a orangutan or a sun bear. What do orangutans have black fur? No, but I'm saying that's a that's another thing. Like maybe it's a orangutan that does happen to have black fur, like a weird one, or maybe they just there's a lot of murkiness in a jungle, so you're not gonna see everything maybe as clearly as you think you are. Okay, but. I mean, an orangutan and a sun bear spend most of their time in trees, and all of these sightings are this creature walking around on two feet. Hmm. The most famous sighting, yeah. or the most famous modern sighting, comes from 2005, when and pond workers um, saw three of them. So they saw two adults and one child. So all walking, all walking past on like in bipedal locomotion, which I, don't, I think it's unlikely that you'd get three sun bears doing this. This is in daytime as well, so somehow they misidentified three bears for three giant apes. And this also is what prompted that um, the local government investigation in 2006 that allegedly produced the photos of the footprints, the photos mm -hmm. of the footprints. 
Um, so you thought they saw three sun bears? Also, sun bears are usually solitary, <laughs> apart from like Maybe a mother and a Maybe they saw three orangutans. And they were all walking upright? Um, and, and these maybe. just happened to be three that all had dark hair? Is, it, is that what it says, that they all had dark hair? Uh, I believe so. Um, I don't know. Could just be... Who knows? Well, okay, let's see. If you look at a picture of orangutan, like, uh, they can walk. Yeah, you can look okay, it up and yeah, find sure. pictures of orangutans walking. three at the same time, even a baby? Um, I'm not they, saying they can't walk, like, I'm saying... Um, what, well, apes have culture. They ha- they have learned behaviors from each other. So maybe one of them learned how to walk and like they were all just playing around, testing it out. So do you think they saw three large orangutans with different shade of hair that were all walking upright? Um, uh, yes, but in a more softer way, you could say that they, it was, they saw through the shaded canopy of a jungle, um, which made okay. the fur appear darker. They saw three orangutans um, in a sort of upright position. That's what I'll say. I don't know about that. Um, and what about the footprints they found? And that uh, when they did their search, the local government, they found 18 inch long footprints. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's uh, Those are pretty big. But haven't they found that most footprint sightings like that have been faked? Have they? What's your source on that? Uh, I don't have a source. I was just wondering if they have. Because I know, th- I know there was a time when they were faked, right? Big footprints. Which footprint? What are you talking about? Just big footprints in general. Haven't they been faked before? Bigfoot footprints? Yeah. Yeah? What makes you think that these footprints right, have so been faked? Right, so I'm just saying they could have been faked. It's not like the end-all, be-all of evidence. If you can fake it once, you can fake it again. I mean, I guess so. But what, what makes you think that they were faked? D- like, nothing The, the local government that... hired researchers to go out and find... I mean, in the BBC one, they were looking for footprints for a long time, and then they just kind of eventually found them beside a river, and it was like they were, like, trekking through the jungle in the middle of nowhere. So someone went there preemptively, put the footprints there, and hoped that they would find them? Could have, because if they knew that the um, if they knew the study was happening and the government has put so much effort into this, um, someone could have paid someone to do it, or they some just... Random person could have learned about it and done it as a prank. There are lots of reasons why. Well, what about the news Learning report? about this. What about the news report? Why would they fake? Who fake, faked them that time? Sorry, which news report again? The BBC one. About the, the finding BBC the is separate from the local government one. Yeah. Well, again, it could be like we have these like hotshot filmmakers here. Let's either the government wants to make it more intriguing to visit their country. Or, like I said, a random person thought it would be fun to just fake it. There's a lot of reasons why someone would fake it. So. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know how you'd plan it so well that people would stumble upon it. I don't know. They Maybe they knew the route that the filmmakers were going to take. Or the, yeah, the investigators. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I, don't, I think the biggest thing for me is, like, I don't think the description really fits in orangutan. Uh, hmm. And also the... Um, the Arang Mawas is supposed to be mostly nocturnal. Orangutans are diurnal. Maybe these are freaky ones who have um, behavioral issues, and that's why they're always walking, and the other orangutans think they're weird, so they have to so These are freaky, extra big night. orangutans <laughs> that like to walk on two yeah. feet. And have yeah, they're the, they're the outcasts. Okay. Uh, the last thing you said was that um, maybe they're outcasts, right? Yeah. And what I said was, do you th- what, imagine if uh, speciation could occur. Um, and then there'd be a different species. Well, it's only a few little individuals. We'd have to give them a new name. <laughs> it's only a few individuals. I don't know if they've been speciated well, maybe yet. Maybe they already have a name. I don't know if they've been speciated yet. And really? You, the, and you well, saying... the sightings have gone back hundreds of years. You're saying maybe so. they already have a name. Again, I want to get into the linguistic aspect of it, where Mawas is already the name for a generic orangutan. So it's not like you can just say, oh, because there's a name, it proves that... Or, yeah, they have a name, they're a separate creature. So in some cases, it is just a different name for the same creature. So so maybe they don't already have a okay, name because they're the same. And what I'm saying is that there's a lot of these sightings, they don't sound like an orangutan to me. Well, what I'm saying is your speciation uh, theory has issues. And just because there are a few weirdos doesn't mean that they're a new species. Okay, well, I mean, there has to be more than a few weirdos if the sightings go back for more than 100 years. Yeah, but 100 years isn't really... Evidence of a new species. Well, the first Westerner, Western records is like eighteen mid-1800s, I think. Mm. 
And you also have to think about how humans really love the idea of a giant ape in the forest. I mean, in every culture, there's this idea. I think it might just be a natural inclination of us to see something. And in our minds, we change what we remember and uh, we add more human characteristics because that's just human nature. And yeah. Well, the description of the face sounds more like a one of the other great apes to me. Well, could be orangutan face though. Do orangutans have that bony ridge above their eyes? Yeah, they do. They have a pretty bony ridge there. Very expressive eyebrows. I know. Well, I've said my bit. Yeah. Um. Actually, I do really hope that it's real because it sounds cool and uh, it does seem like it is a great place for it to be because the the jungle is dense and uh, it could just be sort of if orangutans can survive there, why not a slightly lo- or a larger one uh, that's also related to humans and orangutans is basically an ape. Um, but as the you know anti cryptid stance in this. I just have to say that humans can blow a lot of things out of proportion in their memories and it could have been a sun bear or a big orangutan and it, it's hard to see in the jungle. Could and... have been a sun bear. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things that could explain this.